one of the most recognizable stories of all scripture is the story of David and Goliath. It's one of the stories that every kid learns. It's written down in every single children's Bible. And in fact, it's so popular that it has kind of been ingrained in the literary consciousness of society. It's alluded to in plays and in movies. People talk about facing their Goliaths. It's so well known. But when we look at the account in scripture, we see something a lot deeper than just small boy beats big guy. It's a lot more than that. The account is about the presence of God in the midst of God's people and the power that comes from God's presence. When you read the account of David and Goliath, which is found in the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, I think we see three amazing things. Firstly, we see a sense of preparation in David. David goes to King Saul about joining the army and defeating Goliath. And Saul says, you're too young, you can't do this. And David begins to talk about how he has protected the flock out in the fields. He says, when lions and bears come against us, I defeat them, I chase them down, and I slay them. This Philistine will be exactly like that. While David has been doing the routine of his life, just going through the normalcy of his day, God had been silently preparing him for his battle with Goliath. And on that day when he goes out into the field, he knows that God has has duly prepared him for that battle. God has worked with him in the past for this particular purpose. There's a sense of preparation, how God prepares us for where God leads us. Secondly, there's a sense of just dynamic power within this, within this passage. When, when Goliath says to David, uh, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? David responds by saying, you come at me with swords and with spears and with javelins, but I come at you with the power of the living God. See, that's what this story's about. It's not about the might of soldiers. It's not about the bravery of David. It is about the power of God in the midst of God's people. That was David's focus. That was, was David's wish. David's ultimate focus and wish throughout this whole entire passage, this whole entire event, is for God to be praised. And that's the third thing that we see. David goes out to Goliath, not necessarily to defeat him uh, for political purposes or for the expansion of borders or for the honor of Israel or any of that. He doesn't do that for that reason. He says to Goliath that I will slay you so that the Philistines may know that there is a God in Israel and that God is to be praised. When we look at the story of David and Goliath, we see preparation, we see power, and we see the call to praise. You know, so often in life, we can face the big things that we think are our giants, our Goliaths. And if we only focus on the dynamics of of small guy or small woman against big thing, it can really seem daunting. But if we take the, the message from David and Goliath, it doesn't seem that way. Because if God has led us into certain situations, then we can know that God has duly prepared us. Just as we've gone through the mundane of our life, the normalcy of our day, just existed within the fields, tending the sheep, as boring as it might seem, we can know that silently God has prepared us. That for which God leads us into, God has prepared us for. And so we can be confident in going into that place, no matter how big that mountain is, how scary that giant is. We've been prepared. And we go with the power of God. We go not with the power of stratagems and tactics and, and swords and spears and javelins. We don't go with any of that any human might or human power, we go with the power of the living God who dwells with us and who fights for us. And with that, how can we not then praise? How can that not be in our hearts? How can we not sing out the praises of God who fights for us and who protects us? How can we not face whatever it is that we face and say, I face this so that the world may know that there is a God in this world. So wherever you are in life, whether you exist in the normalcy of your routines, just in the fields tending the sheep, or if you're in the thick of battle facing this giant in front of you, be encouraged. Be encouraged that 
God has prepared you and his power is for you. Be encouraged that God surrounds you in the normal and in the extraordinary times of your life.